The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. Um, just a quick history of this. Uh, this vehicle that we're working on, this system human product vehicle, was made in the summer in eight weeks and uh, it runs and everything, but it didn't have a door or a windshield, and so that was our job. Um, and our goal was to get it prepared for SolidWorks World, which is actually starting on Monday. Uh, and um, so, so, to be shown there as an example, SolidWorks is one of the sponsors of BDS, so the vehicle is going to go there to show sort of as a what SolidWorks can do project type thing. And uh, the CEO of SolidWorks will be driving on stage later in the week. Is that still your plan? That's still your plan. <laughs> okay. All right, cool. Cool. Cross um, So I'd like to just introduce the team. I'm me. This is Anas and Martin. And we work on the project. Uh, so, so Mike, what just me specify about the entry and exit? The, the, the entry to that car was only through windshield from the front. There was no other way of entering the car. Uh, it was pretty hard to basically uh, either get in or out. And we were trying to define a methodology of really designing a system that could provide some sort of that entry and exit. Uh, we, just, we, we, we started with um, a few uh, finding our objectives. We had initially a, a multi-objective problem. Uh, we had quantifiable criteria, cost, visibility, uh, which we wanted to increase compared to the previous car, uh, the amount of, of time that takes us to get in and out of the car, which was, although you know, we, we didn't define it as a quantifiable criteria, was uh, very hard to model. We had to do it basically just test it. The unquantifiable criteria is ease of manufacturability. Uh, the reason we specified it as uh, unquantifiable because our design was changing so much at the time that we to more of, a, of, of an unquantifiable criteria. Uh, aesthetics was also definitely an unquantifiable criteria, which, which we were, uh, uh, which had no, no model really of, of, of building on. Uh, our constraints were the existing uh, shell, the shape of the existing shell. We were, uh, we were constrained not to, to change anything and uh, basically just maintain the same form. Uh, the weight of, of uh, the new shell uh, should not exceed uh, a, uh, 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 double the, the, uh, the amount of, of whatever material we were taking. Cost uh, was, we had also constraints on cost. I, I can't remember the, 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 how much we were constrained. I think how much we were Some sort of thousand dollars. <laughs> design variables. Uh, we, had geom we had three major design variables. Geometry, number of positions of joints, material, and kinematics as, as, as different methodologies. Uh, these three basically were, were uh, I'll, we started with a few sketches, and I'll, I'll go back to the design variables. We, we started with just a few sketches and ideas of how we want this thing to, and, and we were trying to, to increase the size of the area of, uh, of the glass and, and basically use both the windshield and the uh, uh, the door as, as one uh, component. Uh, we, we started with, with some sort of a design system, and our design system was, was broken down given the design variables we had. So we had geometry at one level of a tree, uh, the materials, uh, transparency uh, versus uh, opaqueness on another, and the kinematics. And based on that, we started building uh, our own design tree, just, just to basically plus out some of the possible solutions. So, and we started generating really a huge amount. Uh, again, that was a small version of the tree. Yeah, which was, yeah, this is definitely a small version of, of the tree. We had something like 200 just sort of little sketches. And, and the idea was basically, we would try, we start with geometry with one line, and start adding different lines of breakage of, of joints. And uh, on one level, uh, based on, on the geometry that's generated there, on a different level, we would start choosing zones and areas of that uh, to, uh, 
to basically change the material and see what, and, and then kinematics on those joints choose what are the uh, types of, is this a fixed joint hinge, a slider, a uh, hatch, and, and the like. Uh, we eventually started even generating hybrids. This was, we had to connect a few tables and just spread the whole thing on it and just start mapping and looking at the different possibilities. Um, we came up with with this solution. Can I ask you real quick, how, what, how did you screen all this? Uh, we, truly by elimination. Okay. Uh, we just went on, based on the initial criteria we had, and given the time we had, we, we had, there was no way of automating this. So we were looking at the different possibilities at that level. Yeah. And looking at all the des different designs, we didn't actually sit down and talk about alternate tech. We started talking, you know, about everyone, but you get repeating sequences, basically, where the only, you get high-level concepts and everything, it's sort of like a door that slides forward. And then, you know, so sliding forward, that's a, that's a two-line geometry, and it slides forward, and then, the map, where you put the material, which parts are okay, which parts clear, didn't really change the concept that much. It's just kind of like that. But it was good to see all of them because we really helped us think about all the potential problems. <coughs> I think this is what engineers call by inspection. Yeah. By inspection. Uh, yeah, th this was uh, this was the uh, the idea behind our design. We started with really just defining a line. Uh, one of the lines we started with the geometry here, uh, basically producing a hybrid of a few solutions we, we came up with and generating this arc uh, that the, the, skip, the, the basically the windshield and windshield door uh, basically slides on top. Uh, and, and, and basically the idea was really to, 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 uh, to look at, at, the, at the windshield as, as being uh, mi minimizing the maximum any any complexities in in, in, in the eye. So it just basically uh, moves on that rail, which is a clear, neat arc, and, and basically just rotates around it, and by its own weight just goes down. So the only force that was there was just the pushing of, 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 the, of the windshield. The mechanics were, were the intent was really to simplify to, to the maximum. We just had two rails on both sides and handles that run within those rails, and the handles actually connect to the to the windshield. Um, and basically, just by pushing it up upwards, uh, we had uh, a small well just hold it in place. When it pushes and uh, releasing it from its position, just basically lets it by 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 its own weight drop and lock in. Uh, that's again just just to zoom in on the rail itself and and the handle. Uh, and this is from the right side, and this is where the windshield really connects. And these are the handles that uh, the driver basically holds and pushes upwards and downwards. Uh, that's that's again with the full, with the, with the canopy in the closed end. Right. Uh, so <coughs> we had to look because the canopy was made out of plexiglass. We had to sort of analyze the loads we were going to put on it see how strong it would be. Um, plexiglass tends to uh, stress crack and then it starts just splitting basically. So it won't, you know, a catastrophic uniform, but it'll over time sort of wear out. And so we had a few tests. The first test was the hard opening. So this is when someone's sitting in the car and they want to get out and they sort of overdo it and slam it to the end of the rail. And so this is modeled um, as, as uh, this part <coughs> fixed because that's the part that slides on the rail, that's attached to the rail, so it's more or less fixed. And this um, you know, up and forward motion, which is what happened when we slide it in. And this is force of 2G, and the mass of canopy is about 11 pounds, so there it is. Um, it's seen the stress is concentrated around the joint, uh, but more or less, you know, we're seeing lots of blue and green, which is okay. <laughs> but um, the displacements are also Acceptable. The canopy deforms quite a bit, but it always comes back to shape for the reason, and so that part was okay. Um, right, next one. This is the driving pressure force. Uh, theoretically, the HPP can go up to 60 miles an hour. No one's ever driven it that fast, as far as I know. But we wanted to see what pressure distribution sort of would be on the canopy at this speed. 
just to see how strong the cadmium would be. We were experimenting with different thicknesses and we ended up with something that's about a sixteenth of an inch, between a sixteenth and an eighth. And um, so we're looking at the pressure distribution to see how, um, basically if it was strong enough and also do we get any sort of resonant frequency as it starts bubbling and all that kind of stuff. Um, as you see the first one, it's like 0.5 hertz and the kinetic displacement was about 3 millimeters from max at 60 miles per hour. Um, which, again, not so bad. Uh, the two things to look at here is that, sort of for for show, the canopy is wasting three millimeters, not so bad, because it's just, you know, for show. If we were to enter it in sort of like eco marathon or something like that, we'd actually want to probably use the original hard canopy so that the aerodynamics were constrained very well instead of flopping around. Um, but that's not in the near future. Next slide. Uh, rail optimization, and so we had the rails as everyone saw, and the guy, and, and we were looking sort of at uh, the, the thickness of the rail from the to be. The main issue with the rail is that it's that kind of shape, uh, as you see here, and it's mounted just here and here, which means if you hit it here, especially into the plane of the board, you're getting a huge moment at the base, and that's, I think, the, really the constraining issue with our rail. Um, so we vary the thickness of the rail to find the optimum sizes, and, and um, the side note load we did was 40 newtons, uh, which is basically someone hitting on the canopy accidentally, or when you're getting the car accidentally kicking the rail, that kind of thing. And um, so we tried at first making these two lanes. The numbers came out to be fairly thick at first, um, using, I think it just came out to be half an inch or something like that, and we're like, wow, half an inch a little bit of block. It's kind of thick. So we tried making a sandwich material, and it's like, this is not, you know, it didn't work too well. Delaminated, especially if we tried to glue it after wire denting it. Um, and so that worked. But now we're using a 0.25 aluminum rail. And what we did to, to, to allow ourselves to go to that thinner amount is we increased the thickness of this part, uh, the, next to the sort of the margin between the slot and the rail. And what that we found was there's a lot of twisting in the rail in the first one we made. So we increased that thickness, and that helped us improve this one. Um, next slide. Okay, I'm sorry, I, I didn't quite catch that. Um, it, based on your safety factor, first you had half an inch, and that caused delamination. Then you said, no, we're going to go to 0 0.25. Uh, but now the rail is of non-uniform thickness. Uh, no. no. Um, I should say that. So first we had half an inch, and we thought, wow, this is really heavy. So we made that laminate, which was aluminum, wood, aluminum, plywood. And it didn't work very well. It's very twisty and all that. So then we said, well, I mean, I guess we in our space, I mean, I thought half an inch aluminum is a really thick rail. Do we really need that thick? And so what we did was we made a design change where we found that the, this is the weak area, as you can see. This is the, the weak area, and here. And so we thickened these parts. We made the rail this wide, and we made this one wider too. Same groove size, but more material, more material this way instead of into the board. But still uh, 0.25 thickness. Right. You just broaden the rail. Right. Okay. Exactly. And that, that helped a lot. Yep. Next slide. Um, this is our SolidWorks optimization. We use the optimization feature. It's pretty interesting, um, <laughs> sort of. Uh, it, Go, this is our design variable, which is in our case thickness. So we basically asked SolidWorks, we had the rail, and we said, this is actually prior to manufacturing. We had the rail, and we said, how thick should the rail be for these loads? And it goes through all its different points, and you can see points here, here, and here. And what this shows you is that, um, and this is like optimality, so lower is better, or until it breaks. So what this shows you is SolidWorks optimization path, which at first it's a one inch rail, it just iterates to get the right number, and it went down, went back up, went down, and finally settled at a 0.23 inch rail, which is why we went to 0.25. Okay, uh, having just come from the workshop, I was thought I should talk about fabrication. Uh, our canopy, uh, we tried to heat form it ourselves, just using heat guns and the existing mold. That didn't work at all, it was bubbly, didn't really match the shell very well. 
So we ordered a can of from a professional manufacturer in Florida. Uh, the handles, uh, which are not so good, they're made out of aluminum tube, and they're being welded onto water jetted guide rails, uh, which will then be attached by U-clamp to the existing chassis. And then to attach, to keep <coughs> the canopy in place, we're going to use adhesive back magnetic strip, which is mounted on both the canopy and the shell. Uh, so, just right there, but these, uh, these are our rails. Uh, you can see we mounted those onto the chassis just using clamps last night. And in order to draw a line on the shell, which is one of the sort of fundamental manufacturing problems we had, how do you get an exact curve cut on the shell? Uh, we came up with this, say, genius uh, hydraulic mechanism where we match the two rails so the same level and the same distance apart and then and that's use the horizontal marking tool to uh, draw a curve on the shell. Uh, now you have a curve on one side of the shell, uh, how do you replicate the exact same curve on the other side? Uh, one answer, probably not the most efficient answer, is to draw a grid on your shell uh, like so. So this, this line here it's a fixed distance from the wheel. <coughs> These lines are all all have exactly the same separation, which is 100 millimeters. And you can see on the other side, we have the same or a mirror image of this line, a mirror image of the grid. And then we just measured these distances using string and transferred them across. And that was surprisingly accurate to within about two or three millimeters. And uh, from there we went to cutting it. And is that the actual canopy from Florida? Uh, yes, that is. Also, oh, so that was a fairly quick delivery time. Oh yes, yeah. absolutely. Uh, within about three, four days of ordering it, five, five days of ordering it, we had a product. That's very impressive. Yes. Well, yeah. Okay. The canopy was not exactly the sheet. Yeah. Part of the the trick of canopy is we use this guy <coughs> hand forms canopies as opposed to everyone else that's like, where's your CNC mold? don't have one, it's not going to make one for $20,000. So um, the result of that is it's not the exact shape, but it actually turned out pretty good. Nice you can see it's share, uh, it's overhanging the edge quite a bit. So we trimmed it. Uh, yeah, we, we cut it uh, and we found that to be actually quite awkward and our accuracy of two or three millimeters was perfectly acceptable uh, in the measurements. Uh, so we took the plunge, we cut a big hole out of the shell and just put it going back now. Uh, this is how the canopy will look. Uh, you can see we have a hole here. We do have extra pieces of plastic which we can, uh, or me, uh, Todd, the person in the canopy, couldn't go down into this area uh, and match the curve. How are you going to, are you going to double them up? Or how are you going to uh, yeah, we plan to either, we have a couple options. We're thinking perhaps using the shell of cut out. Just curving it across there. And that would give reinforcement uh, and then either glue or use bolts to attach the canopy. Or we have extra plastic that we can form using the bolts and again just reinforce a bit and glue or use bolts. Uh, so tell us what, what's next. The handles are being welded to the rails as we speak. Uh, attach the rail to the chassis and the shell canopy, reinforce the canopy, attach the canopy to reinforce the has that to the handles. Test mechanism might come after we drive the HP SolidWorks world. We'll be on stage by the CEO who test it for us. Perhaps. And uh, magnetic strips, not so important uh, if you're not going to be driving around them. Uh, cost estimation. Uh, the major cost was uh, the labor <coughs> for us. Uh, obviously, we, had to, we were very constrained with the existing shell and the existing chassis, so they had, uh, whenever it was originally designed, it wasn't really thought of how you're going to get in and out, uh, and especially not how you're going to get in and out in an elegant way, so you can do it in front of the crowd. So that was quite a big problem for us, and we spent a lot of time designing and iterating different solutions, uh, and that's, that's the main cost. If you were to do it again, it would be a lot less. Uh, so the lessons we've learned, our set realistic goals, um, I think 
perhaps going for such a complicated ship may have been a mistake. Uh, we, will, we will see later on. Uh, better use of FDA. Uh, as you can see, we went for quite chunky reels. I think if we did work at that a bit more, we could have got the mass uh, down more, which would be good if the HPP is used for racing. Uh, as I said, we're still manufacturing, so we should have started earlier. Uh, having the right tools, making the right decisions at the right time, and, all these things. and uh, here you can just see, this is what we started with. This is as it was a couple of hours ago. That's the beacon technique. That's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for This is an AHPV, yeah. 
So, okay, now it's cold outside, so that won't be a big problem. But uh, if someone is really pedaling hard on this, uh, going to work, uh, a lot of heat is going to develop in there. Uh, how does that internal airflow management, uh, you know, before it was no problem because it was open, we had free airflow. Uh, it, you know, you, now you have really nice aesthetics, but what about the heat management inside? Okay. Um, well, so the bottom part of the canopy, which is, sorry, on the shelf, there's a bottom part which attaches to the HPV. It's not quite flush, and there are holes in it, actually, <coughs> specifically for the wheel well. There's a, there's a gap around the wheel well on both sides and by the back of the motor. So we thought about that, and um, we didn't calculate out the exact amount of airflow we needed. Um, we were, I guess, more focused on getting it completed. But could cut out some parts for the canopy, um, just on the canopy for airflow. And but right now there is quite a lot of air coming from the wheel well. If you see the wheel wells here, the wheel takes it's a bicycle wheel and it's all the space is open. And so it really covers very little of the wheel well in either configuration. Okay. So I guess we're kind of going right now. Any other questions? Okay, thank you very much. So that's the end of the class. <laughs> I get some sleep. Uh, upload anything that you haven't uploaded yet and check your email and then have a good start. And I'm hoping, I, I don't know exactly what everyone's plans are, but if, if some of you are, are interested in, that are not part of EDS or MITSET and you're continuing to, you're interested in continuing to help out, by all means, uh, I encourage you to sort of I'm assuming that they're welcome to, yeah, to, 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 to integrate yourself into those teams. It'll run a little bit differently than this class, but yeah.